Congratulations, Hollywood. All that criticism and flack you've been taking about films being too bloated and exhaustingly long. You've absolutely outdone yourselves here with incredible economy, managing to cram everything the majority of society loathes about Hollywood into the span of a single toe-curling and cringe-inducing minute-long teaser trailer for Wicked. Number 1. Taking a beloved, iconic feature of cinema from yesteryear already twisted and contorted into some hyper-camp, twat-waffle, chuckle-fuck piece of poppycock that was the stage musical, a production that countless thousands of skeptical husbands on vacation in New York were roped into seeing by their wives, and who sat scowling incomprehendingly, but nonetheless holding out for the compensation of their wives being sensually invested in the crap on stage, and that being redirected or finding an outlet and intercourse later on in the hotel suite. And that musical now being taken a step further into yet another rehashed, reimagined, on-screen remake. 2. Race swapping the main character and incongruously and awkwardly slathering her in the exact same shade of green as She-Hulk and Shrek, so that she looks like Michelle Obama smeared herself all over with green tea retinol face cream and then donned Janis Joplin's glasses and dressed up like a dominatrix Severus Snape. 3. Making the new character benign, self-effacing, and a dreary, tail-end of millennial, top-end of Gen Z, lightweight, charisma vacuum of a protagonist who has the mannerisms and expressions and characteristics of a tween. 4. Placing her in a generic college context and making her a fish out of water with her painfully clumsy, obvious, done-to-death, uninspiring and insipid metaphor about being a minority or being held to account by the bland generality. 5. This idea falling on its ass due to this bland, judgmental generality being in fact a sexually ambiguous, post-racial utopia, where everyone is essentially different. 6. Including a woman who was painfully ditzy and inane and looks like Elsa from Frozen, crossed with the clumsily self-conscious but endearing girl from the American Pie series, and the actress coming across as if she might actually have motor or psychological developmental delays, or have been conjured up by AI, where the rendering was constantly interrupted by the internet cutting out, causing perturbing glitches and playback issues. 7. Have generic trailer music which starts off as a subdued, emotionally brittle version of a song, and then have it spiral and erupt and explode into a synth-swirling chaos of strings, as if John Williams was going into anaphylactic shock while using Pro Tools, and have these pounding waves of overwrought sonic madness crest with a spasm of wailing, as if the vaguely Middle Eastern caterwauling chick in the Dune soundtrack was orgasming while reading Sylvia Plath. <laughs> and that sample put through a hundred filters to airily and preternaturally reflect the inner psychological screaming of my soul. 8. Do the strange, recurring trope of the modern age, like that cow from a hundred Dalmatians, or the other cow from the Little Mermaid, and about a dozen other cows in cinema, and instead of them simply being villains, for socio-cultural fourth-wave wanky reasons, raise them aloft on a cloud of queefs to make them sort of anti-heroes, who actually have a relatable side and are sympathetic in some way because even fun evil characters have to be rescued from their prison of mischaracterization from yesteryear because they're chicks, and cinema needs empowerment, irrespective of context or common sense. 9. Make the Wizard of Oz, who was an appealing and compelling multifaceted character laden with interesting ironies in the original, and instead make him a clumsily brain-dead two-dimensional representation of the patriarchy, and place him in a dumb, brain-dead two-dimensional antagonist relation to our empowered, sweet, but latently powerful female character. 10. Do the other tedious, done-to-death, overly scuffed trope of the modern age of making the female protagonist not weak because she has character flaws, but weak because of how she's been socially conditioned to think of herself, and that she will find that she is ultimately fabulous and stunning and brave because she always was, except that her potential and inherent fabulousness was stifled, and it is only by breaking free of those societal and social constraints that she can unleash the sheer indomitable force of her stunningness. 11. Feature sickeningly gross, candy-coloured, perspectiveless and gaudy CGI, with no depth to it, that makes you wince and squint with the optical equivalent of eating candy that is too sour, and makes you ponder how the inevitably gigantic budget could produce visuals of such bafflingly shite quality. 12. Lastly, make it intensely dependent on girl friendship and compassion and solidarity, with a hint that whatever may be to come, whatever divisions may ensue, are again only a consequence of societal pressures or social constructs, and that inevitably they will end up as besties because they're cool, awesome, 
Fabulous, stunning and brave chicks, and it's 2024, and Hollywood sucks, and the entertainment industry is a pustulous, virulently stinking and fetid corpse, gradually liquefying into a stagnant foul ooze. A feculent, putrid and rotting mass of identity politics, exhausted tropes, horrific visual effects, derivative copies of copies of copies, and unmitigated horseshit. So, thank you, Hollywood, for giving me this super economical one minute of everything that grinds my gears, boils my piss, spins my melon, and drives me up the wall, around the bend, around the twist, to distraction, and to drink. I feel now, Hollywood, that we're locked in a supreme struggle. Some macabre existential dance. I am Oscar Wilde. You are the wallpaper. One of us has to go.